you know, how often doctors say to us, you have to take it easy, you've got to start relaxing or you're going to kill yourself. They do not realize the wisdom of those words. What is relaxation? Being, being yourself. And then people think of being as being, not doing anything. Being can be very, very active because it acts through love. You see? Whether it's, uh, whether it's teaching, whether it's playing. Did you ever see children play in the playground? How beautiful they are, how spontaneous, the action is so spontaneous. You see, what is playing? It is being in expression. You see? If somebody sings from their heart. Um, lately I've been listening to, uh, what's her name, the country singer. Now, not that I like country singing so much, but I love her. Patsy Cline. Patsy Klein. Mm. She sings from her heart. And even though the, the words themselves are very human, <laughs> but it, it's amazing. She makes you feel as if she's singing to you. Because she feels, when she's singing, she is the words she's saying. Now where does that come from? That's the being, you see? That's the being expressed through that love. And love comes in many forms. There are no, there are no limits. So are there any, any questions? The whole thing, of course, is to understand human being. When the human becomes humble, when the human starts understanding that it's helpless, that it is not a doer, it is not a controller. The moment it sees that, the human and the being become one. They've never been separate anyway. Subject and object are always one. You know, we can say that the human is the object because it appears as something. But the being is what makes it appear in the first place. And the two are one. When you begin to see that oneness, that's love. That's the totality. Very good question. Um, it seems as you're talking about this that, um, at least up until now, that that human part mm -hmm. um, takes credit for much of what you're talking about is really being. I mean, yes. the human part, you know, if you say that the ego part takes well, credit, doesn't it? Well, I choose to do a a kind thing. I choose to be helpful. Uh -huh. um, this is my humanness expressing itself. I, uh -huh. you know, I choose to be more, you know, express more of my humanity that, in that kind of sense. You know, mm -hmm. When I hear you talk about it, they say, well, that's, that's really not the human. That's the, the being that's, that's right. making that choice. But the it ego, appears as the human, then. It appears as the human. The ego right. says, no, that's me. Yes. Making that choice, yes. Being kind or not being kind. Now you begin to understand that it's the being doing it all the time. You don't make the choice. Love never chooses. Love acts. When you, when the human makes a choice, it always makes a boo-boo, because it comes from conditioned response. I have decided to do this based on what? My past experience. Mm -hmm. You see? And therefore you make mistakes. But when you choose from love, then it's not a choice. Then it's coming. And all we need to do is listen to our heart. And we know. You're going out with two women. And they're both gorgeous and you like them both, but you can't decide which to marry. And the reason you can't decide is because the human and the being are in conflict. But if you were to become very, very still, who do I really would like to spend the rest of my life with? You know in your heart. You just know. Your heart always knows. That's the being. Okay? Yeah. The heart always knows. But the reason you become confused is because the human and the being are in conflict and they create confusion. We can say it's the, 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 the um, contrary to fusion. Okay? It's not that confusion doesn't really mean that, but we can see it that way. And it has to be fusion between the human and the being. So the human cannot help being. Weak, uh, weak. The human is very, very weak. It, it gives in to every thought, gives in to every emotion, it gives in to weakness very easily. 
you know, and the more the human needs something badly, the less they do it. I tell clients sometimes, I say, you know, when you go home, I give them some techniques sometimes to do because they particularly need it. And, and then they're still going through their pain. They come back next week and I says, did you do it? They said, well, no. Why? Because I was so depressed, I didn't do it. When you're depressed, you do the opposite of what you need to do. Isn't that a kick in the pants? That's the human. You see? And it's, and I say, it's okay, fine, you know. You couldn't help it. The human always sabotages. It always sabotages itself from what it's own. But when you begin to see that, and seeing is the important thing, because you're not in control, you don't do anything. When you begin to see how helpless the human is, how weak it is, that very seeing brings you to being. You see? All surrender, all trust, all awakening of the inner energy happens when we begin to become humble, when we, become, um, when we begin to see the helplessness of who we thought we were. And then we move into being. Yeah. Ninety-five percent of the time it is through pain that we wake up. You see, when we see the, um, the invalidity of our efforts, of our doing, of our control. And then, paradoxically, as we move to being, we're in full control, without controlling. It, that's right. Go? Yes. When you allow the being to be. For now you might say, how? How, do you, how can the human allow the being? This is when the love of truth starts building inside you and it comes to a crescendo. You love the, you love the being so much that you fall in love with it. Because the being is your beloved. Mm -hmm. But the being is not confined to one form, to one human. It is just is. It's a totality. It's a oneness. It is God. It is, the, it is the divine life. It is it. So now when you, when you begin to fall in love with this, you begin to want to sit still. You want to allow yourself to be. You see? That there's uh, some words, by uh, spiritual words that are so beautiful. It says, be still and know I am God. You've heard those seven words, right? Yeah. So when you allow yourself to be still, you begin to see. When and it is that that draws you back and brings you strong, yeah. But when you're, 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 you're starting to feel the love and the being, how do, you, how do you differentiate it from the human part, what the human thinks? You about? don't. You don't. The, the, human is, the human is an appearance. It is always what the human is doing. Okay, let's... No, this is very, very good. And I, and I want you to continue asking these questions. Okay, picture, picture you are a being now. How do you see the human? What is the human doing? What is one thing that the human is doing all the time? Thinking. Okay, it's true. It's true. It is constantly seeking the being. That's what the human is doing all the time. It is seeking the being. I want a big home, the best, blah, blah, blah. I've got lots of money, I want a big car. Why? A big car gives me power. Power is in being. The home gives me security, gives me comfort, gives me peace, which is the being. You see what I mean? I want a relationship so that I can be emotionally secure. Why? Because I'm seeking the being. When I'm in that relationship, I feel, I feel this, this domesticity. I feel this warmth. I feel I belong. You see? We want that oneness. I want to belong. You see? So all the time, what the, the human is doing is seeking the being. All the time. Now, when you start becoming aware of that, you begin to realize that the human never was. It was just a play. It was just an appearance. There was only being doing everything in the first place. Understanding me? And then you realize that what we thought was human was just an appearance. It was never real. But it was that first 
appearance that made us see and made us feel empty, made us feel lacking, so that we went deeper and deeper. What is life all about? What is, what, what is this? What am I? Who am I? I don't know who I am anymore. And then we come to the point where we're pulled towards something deeper, you see? And it is that pull that wakes us up.